Let us explain how the atria become divided into the left and right atrium. We can use the frontal section of the heart or through the heart. So just a scheme that will be the outer shape and the wall with the sinoatrial opening with the right future, future right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium and here from the dorsal aspect of the left atrium there is a septum growing downwards. Another septum that uh, connects the dorsal with the ventral wall is the septum intermedium here. So we got the sinoatrial opening here <laughs> hanging on the so-called septum sporium <coughs> this will be the space of the right atrium <coughs> sorry this will be the space of the left atrium right ventricle left ventricle. A mass of endocardium connecting the anterior with the posterior wall of the heart is called the septum intermedium. And from the cranial part wall of the atria there, there is a um, uh, septum primum growing here. And it grows in this direction towards the septum intermedium. In the next step You'll see again the sinoatrial opening, the right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium. Now the septum primum has grown towards the septum intermedium, but there is an opening there. This opening is called the ostium primum. Ostium is just a Latin word for opening. So this is the right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle and left atrium. The left atrium also has an, receives an opening of the pulmonary vein, which at first is a single one. Later on, they become more openings. And this is the septum. This one is called the septum primum. With an opening called ostium primum. Then there is the septum intermedium. And the right atrioventricular canal. Here it's broad at the beginning, but there are endocardial cushions 
growing here and the septum is also increasing here will be the left atrioventricular canal now the blood can flow from the right atrium not only to the right ventricle but also to the left atrium and then to the left ventricle through that uh, ostium primum however the ostium primum is closing and at the same time there is apoptosis here in the septum primum creating a new opening which will be on our next next scheme so now the situation is different we got the new opening in the septum primum, which is more cranially. And moreover, a new septum will start to grow here, right to the septum primum. So again, right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium and this apoptosis created a new opening called the ostium secundum literally translated as the second opening which is still an opening in the septum primum where is the ostium primum it has disappeared okay and we got a new septum proliferating here. There is also interventricular septum growing here at the same time. And it's that, that part uh, that grows upwards and it will become the muscular part of the final interventricular septum of the muscular part of the final interventricular septum and finally What comes out of this combination of two septa? We got the sinoatrial opening here. And there is a septum primum with the opening called Ostium Secundum and right to that we got new septum called Septum Secundum so if this is the still the right ventricle uh, sorry, right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, and left atrium. Here we got four openings of the pulmonary veins that have been incorporated into the wall of the growing left atrium. Don't forget, even though I'm drawing this in similar size on my scheme, in reality the heart is increasing in size significantly.
However, this being the septum primum, with the opening called ostium secundum, and this new septum is called septum secundum. Second septum. And the opening is called foramen ovale. So this is the normal uh, situation before birth where the blood flows. Flowing into the right atrium has two options. Either to flow into the right ventricle, but a significant part goes through the foramen ovale, through the ostium secundum into the left atrium together with the blood from the pulmonary veins. So there is a right to left shunt, shortcut let us say, shunt, before birth, during the embryonic and fetal period. So this is before birth. Now the pressure gradient uh, here that uh, that uh, is the cause of this uh, shunt is that there is somehow greater blood pressure in the right atrium than in the left atrium. I shouldn't label. I shouldn't forget. For, uh, shouldn't have forgotten label the the opening of pulmonary veins. that open into the left atrium. Okay, why is that? Because the pulmonary veins carry only little blood. There is no blood, significant blood flow into the lungs that are collapsed. So uh, the venous return from the lungs is really low. The blood pressure is lower here. While the right atrium is supplied not only by the body coming, uh, sorry, by the blood coming from uh, from the the superior and inferior vena cava, but the inferior vena cava is also supplied by the umbilical uh, vein. So there is before birth there is normally a right to left shunt on the level of atria. From from the right atrium blood flows from the right atrium to the left atrium through these openings. In contrast with the situation after birth, so after birth, what happens? What changes? I'll draw only this upper portion of the of the atria which will be sufficient for that So the sinoatrial opening. Now we got the septum secundum with the opening called foramen ovale. But now the septum primum will close the foramen ovale like this. Why is that? Let me add the pulmonary veins here and label the right atrium and left atrium. After birth, the lungs will expand, the baby starts to breathe. Now what ha what happens th with the with the high vascular resistance that used to be in the lungs in the pulmonary circulation before birth? that prevented most of the blood to flow in. The vascular resistance of the pulmonary circulation drops after birth as the lungs expand. 
therefore more blood will flow into the lungs, therefore more blood will return from the lungs via the pulmonary veins. So after birth there is an increased venous return into the uh, return of the venous blood into the uh, left atrium which increases the blood pressure in the left atrium. Simultaneously uh, the blood flow uh, through the umbilical vein stops so through vena cava there is coming less blood so there is a reverse in the blood pressure be in comparison with the, the situation before birth, birth and therefore the septum primum will close the foramen ovale so we have increased venous return into the the left atrium <coughs> so this results in the closure of the foramen ovale after birth <coughs>